Peace and blessings and welcome back to Heritage Hip Hop. We in the new confines. We're in the castle right now. And we sitting with one of the kings of the underground movement of Jersey Hip Hop. People say Jersey has real spitters and I got one right here. Introduce yourself to the people. Hey man, it's Ro, man. You know, regulating on wax, man. You know, I'm here with Heritage Hip Hop. We about to make it happen, man. You know? Let's cut the chase and go to the realness. You know why you one of my favorite new MCs? And I say new because a lot of people don't know your face. No, that's a fact. I say you're one of my favorite new MCs because you are bar none, one of the heaviest bar spitters and punches in the game. Why do you feel you always have to make your presence known no matter if people have maybe heard your rap or identify with your rap style? Why do you always reintroduce yourself to the people? Oh, it's because, you know, like, um, I just like, I need to I need to leave that impression. I need to leave that impression there. So like it's like once you leave an impression there, it will always follow and it goes a long way. So it's like never a dull moment once you leave an impression there. Somebody could always anybody could always go back to like, yo, you heard what he said on or you did what you heard what, like I get off on things like that. You know what I mean? So that's why I keep, I make sure I keep that presence and make sure, you know, I leave that footprint there. You know what I mean? That's called leaving a legacy. And you're leaving a reputation. So see, like, two of my favorite sports is football and <laughs> boxing. Which one do you want to do on this part of the interview? I mean, we could go boxing. Let's go boxing. We could go boxing. What does it mean to be pound for pound? What it means to be pound for pound will be like, for me, yeah. personally, it will be like unmatched in that weight class. You know, uh, that kind of fighter. It will be like, it will be the, a combination of what that person has for that for that particular weight class master. You know what I mean? That's what I would call pound for pound. Pound for pound means punch for punch. You are one of the most skilled, not only in your class, in the sport. Right. So shout out to people who really like boxing because Pernell Pern Pern Whitaker and Michael Nunn were some of my favorite fighters of all time. Shout out to them. You know what I'm saying? And what they did was they had a mix of offense, defense, and they knew how to dictate a fight with how they set the pace. Right. You are a pace puncher in your style. Right. How did you come up with that style and how do you body the beat so that you're always in control of it? Like that style is just like, I don't know, with that style with me, I'm more so like, I will try, I, I, will, I will think of the wittiest punches and I, what's crazy about me is like I don't, I don't just sit there and try to go for punches. They just happen. Okay. Like I don't zero in for yeah. I'm gonna make this punch. or I'm gonna deliver this. This has this punch gonna be. I don't do that. Like I just let it flow. And then when it comes to that, and then when the listener hears it, it's like shit. He was punching. He was punching heavy on this one. Like you know what I mean? It's never like. It's never set. I don't set to do it. It just happens. See, the thing that um inspires my ear right. is when someone can make your ear flip and your mind flop. So it's always doing this, yeah. and nothing ever stays. You know, because like you mean, you know, how you can listen to somebody who's nodding your head like, "All right, swap." Yeah. And you got other people who can who are around you like, "Yeah, he caught that." But then you got some people you can listen to, and it's like the simplest thing. It's it like your mind go. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about yeah that in your style. Yeah, see, see that I now that that I dig into that. That's what I want. You know what I'm saying? I want the listener to like get that kind of reaction from me, and um, I really go in 
on that. Like I go in on that. I try to make sure that there's gonna be a wow factor somewhere in that verse that's gonna have you say, listen, I need you to rewind this. Because you didn't hear that part and this part. Like, this is what I do. Like I, I like to I like to do that because I, I feel like, you know, and a lot of artists, you know, like not not more so like in the 90s all the way to like the the, the the late 90s but i feel like like the newer artists it's like it's missing you know what i mean yeah so it, that's what makes me uh you know do that more because i feel like you know you need that you need that wolf factor you need that wow factor like yo you know what i mean because i remember what it did to me back then when i used to listen to them locks and the clue albums I just be like, yo, you gotta rewind that. You ain't hear what that man say, like, and and that that was it for me. So in return, in the culture, and that's what I try to do. You know what I mean? I, so I dig into that. Who was the MC who inspired you? Um, the MC who inspired me. It was a combination. It okay. wasn't just one. Okay. So I will say, um, Red Man okay. was one. The first one. The first artist that inspired me was Red Man. Um, style, um, wittiness, and how you know he was like dominating. You know what I mean? Like he had dominated track. Uh, that's one of the artists. Jay Z was another, and Styles P. So I'ma say, I'ma say, Red Man, Jay Z, and Styles P. What's funny is if you look at the origin of the people you're talking about. Right. You're talking about KRS One, Cool G Rap, and Big Daddy Kane. The funny thing is, though, I don't think you're a rhyme. You're a rhymer from that era, but your style is not from that era. It's different. And you know what's crazy about it? Um, the first album I ever had was, um, what was it? Uh, Return of the Boom Back. Okay. That was the first album That's I ever classic. owned That's a myself. Mm -hmm. So to me, that was like an introduction to the rap game for me mm -hmm. as being being a, a kid that's 11, 10 years old. You know what I mean? That was the introduction to rap for me. Return of the Boom Back, KRS-One. The, the song on that album, if you think about me, it would make sense to you. My favorite song on that album is High Level. I love that. <laughs> I love that joke. High Level, that was a classic. Like, like everything on there is like a class. I, I also have, I listen to it in my car because it takes me back to that very moment where it was like, this, this was the first album I listened to. Like, this was the introduction to hip hop for me. And, um, even though it's different now back from back then because back then it was more so like you know you had more artists that was giving you more positive you know they was leaving you more on a positive note mm -hmm. than anything else like versus nowadays you get you know you just get monkey bars you get meaning <laughs> meaning you get People just going in, and it doesn't necessarily have a, you know, like a like a positive meaning to it. But to 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 me, I get off on monkey bars because you get to go eight shit, and you really listen. You get to listen to um, the skill level. You get to listen to the skill level of the artist. You know what I mean? Your skill level is very, like I said, punch oriented. I think if you was a member of boot camp, put yeah, 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 <laughs> boot camp. You, you and um, stop. Your stress would be like, and shout out to stress, yo, on the beat. Shout That's out how to I stress. met you. Yes, yes. And, and, and be real with yes. you, y'all have a very, y'all have a very brick city, brick city sound, which I could punch with the best. And I say boot camp because they were, they were, they were punches too. Oh, they represented man. Brooklyn real well. Man, listen, man, boot camp, that was one of the albums I had growing up, man. Like Black Moon, 
Like all of these albums, man, these guys, these guys, man, these are some of the guys that I looked up to coming up as a youngin listening to hip hop. So, you know, it's, it's crazy that you would say that. Like, these are the guys that really paved the way for, for, for somebody like Ro, somebody like Stress to coming in and, and, and you know what I'm saying? You know, MOP, it's a, it's a lot of guys. You know, uh, like you said earlier, Cool G, like, you know, Big Daddy Kane. It's a lot of guys that came and left a mark there for us to be able to come in and do what we do, you know, as artists. So how do you elevate the culture being you and with your style to make them proud of you and to continue the culture as it evolves? I will just, you know, I will, I will, I will keep going. Like I, I will keep going uh, with, with my style. I feel like my style is uh, very unorthodox. I keep going like, you know, I got, like I'm creative, I got different ways to, um, you know, different ways to come on, on different angles, different beats, and um, you know, I just feel like, you know, originality has a lot to do with, you know, um, how you come. Cause uh, these guys, man, like like the guys we just named, you got Black Moon, you got KRS One, you can listen to um, uh, anybody, like Queen Latif. Everybody had their own sound. You know what I'm saying? More so, like today is like not really the case because you hear a lot of the same kind of styles or whatever, so like, that's what I would keep in, you know, I would keep in my own style, my own way of doing things because I feel like that, that'll make you, that'll make you know who you are and stick out amongst your peers, you know, in this hip hop game. Thank you for watching our presentation. We ask that you subscribe to our YouTube family and hit the notification bell for updates. Please like, comment, and share this video.